Paul Mancano, Mass and Orioles insider Rock Cabaco and Rock. Mike Elias loves making moves in the month of February, so we won't say that the Orioles are done making additions to this roster, right. but it seems like they may have completed the bulk of their offseason. I think they have the bulk, but they definitely aren't completely done. I mean, they're going to keep checking the waiver wire, uh, check, you know, see, maybe might be a couple free agents they're still looking at. I can't imagine where you'd fit Michael Waka <laughs> because they did have interest, but who knows? They're still checking. Their, the, the trade market has really picked up once free agency started to slow down and, and the best... Uh, items came off the, the market. So I think there could at least be some possible like depth type moves if they were to go ahead, you know, the camp roster right now is 70 with 30 non-roster invites, the 40-man roster. There's room they could go ahead and bring in somebody else. I think they're still looking maybe corner outfield plus defender. That left-handed bat for backup first base slash DH, I don't think they're necessarily done there. You know, they have Ryan O'Hearn now, Lou and Diaz. I think they're still looking around there to see if there's somebody they add and however that would fit. Otherwise, you look at the projected, as we're projecting, uh, roster for opening day, and there may not be any non-roster invites. So I don't know if they're going to try and squeeze one in there, but I don't think they're completely done. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they make, even if they make a move before we end up in Sarasota, and certainly once we're there, because guys start coming reappearing on the waiver wire when cuts are made in camp, and you start kind of looking around there. Are there upgrades? Is there a guy that could help us here or whatever? And they may go ahead and, and bring in somebody else. I'm braced for it because it seems to happen every February, every March. Yeah. There's somebody who shows up late, and sometimes it's more impactful than others, but usually there's another addition. Well, let's look at what the opening day lineup could look like as well for the first game up at Fenway Park. Now, this is just our projection, and right now we have Kyle Stowers in there as your DH. Of course, starting with Cedric Mullins, Adley Rutschman, Anthony Santander, and Ryan Mountcastle off the top. Gunnar Henderson at third base. Austin Hayes behind him. We have Adam Frazier in the eight hole and playing second. But, Rock, I think that'll depend on who the opposing starting pitcher is because you have Ramon Arias, who is more than capable of being a great second baseman or third baseman. Right. There's going to be a lot of movement. That's what I would have as well for the order. And then it's going to be, you're right, if you're Arias is playing against, let's say, a lefty. Now, let's say it's a straight platoon, but that would make sense to have him at second base versus a left-hander. Maybe Frazier goes to the bench. There are going to be times where Santander is the DH, and I think quite a few times when he's a DH, or Malcastle. And then you're going to have, you know, Stowers in a corner outfield spot and whoever the backup first baseman is that we don't know yet. So I think there's going to be a lot of movement in that way, and that's something they geared toward was the flexibility on the roster, more so than they've even had before, where they want guys to be able to move around yeah. Uh, certain things were starting to come to light. Like, I don't think Gunnar Henderson is going to see the right side unless he has to. I think they really like him on the left side. And if Jorge Mateo is still your shortstop, which he appears to be, that only leaves third base. Last yeah. time I checked the diamond. So I think he's your primary third baseman. And for now, batting fifth. You know, Rutschman mostly hits second in his rookie year. So it makes sense to still put him there. And Mount Castle was mostly the number four hitter, though he also led the club batting fifth. He can't do both. But so I think you put him fourth for now. Also, performance is going to dictate this. If Malcastle goes into one of those slumps that he's been prone to, he's not going to be the cleanup hitter every day. So yeah. that's, you, know, you end up moving him down, you can bump some guys around. But I think that's the, the primary setup. And as for the rotation, the order of this is probably going to be determined during the course of spring training. So I just threw five guys in there that I think are going to make it, and the order is very much up for grabs. I've got Dean Kramer right now. Starting opening day, but we'll see. Behind him, Cole Irvin. He doesn't pitch very well on the road. Kyle Bradish, Grayson Rodriguez. So we think these are the five guys, but we'll see what the order ends up being. Yeah, I feel, I won't say fairly confident that those are the five. Not totally. Order, I have no idea. Could end up being Gibson as your opening day starter. Irvin, maybe they want to keep him out of Fenway as a left-hander. Maybe yeah. he's your number four starter pitching in Texas. I don't know. I don't. You know, some left-handers do have success at Fenway Park. I don't think you have to keep them all away. But right now, it appears to be those five. But then you look and you say, okay, what happened to Tyler Wells, who arguably was their best starter, most consistent in the first half before the first of his two injuries? Is he now in the bullpen? And if so, is that a bulk type role? Is it a piggyback? We don't know. Uh, D.L. Hall, Austin Voth. Yeah. I mean, so you got that kind of second tier then of those guys. Then the third tier of the Zimmermans, Watkins, Bauman. So they have about nine, ten guys. Yeah. And I think those would be the five right now. But then I still kind of wonder, if I'm Tyler Wells, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I 
pitched pretty well, and he went to all this trouble to convert me exactly. back to a starter just to put me back in the bullpen, though he could be a, quite a weapon there. And with Hall, the question is, would they let him go into the bullpen or say, we'd rather you start every five, six days. If it's not here, then let it be AAA and keep developing and work on your command. That's the most interesting storyline in spring training to me yeah. is the rotation. And then let's look at the 26-man roster on opening day as we have it projected as well. Now, you add up the five starters that you have. You add up the nine guys that you have in that lineup. And it's just a matter of who fits into the bench. And right now, Rock, we have backup catcher James McCann. We've got Terran Vavra. Kyle Stowers is a DH type, and Ryan McKenna. Right. I mean, I, th I think that's it, and they're all guys who are on the 40-man. So we don't yeah. see any non-roster types now. That doesn't mean that, again, they bring in somebody later on, before spring training or once we're down there, that, that cracks that group. Or if they decide we really need a Lewin Diaz, who is a plus defender first base, we know that about him, and that he travels well. <laughs> Those are like the two things. Or Ryan O'Hearn. Uh, as far as the bullpen, I mean, the only question for me when you look at this group is then, is, is Aiken in or is it Hall if they're willing to put him in the bullpen? If yeah. they're willing to put D.L. Hall in the bullpen, then I think that squeezes Aiken out if everybody's healthy. And, of course, Andrew Politi, Pol yeah. uh, don't see him in there, the Rule 5 guy, and you have to keep him all year. Uh, so he may end up getting bumped out. Uh, and there are a few other names, and you're going to look at it and say, well, what happened to so-and-so? But there's just not going to be room eight-man bullpen. So I think, again, that one of the reasons the, the rotation storyline is so interesting is because it also does impact the bullpen. Yeah. Who trickles out of there? If it's Wells, uh, if it's Hall, or if, and if it's one of the long guys, could be a Watkins or a Zimmerman or a Bauman. So there's, you know, there's going to be an impact with the bullpen as well.